What do the tarot cards have to say about your energies for August 2022? Stay tuned and we'll find out. So this reading is for all signs. It is time stamped. The time stamps are in the description of the video and in the first pinned comment. Watch for your sun sign, rising sign, moon sign, and Venus sign. Please remember these are general readings. Apply the energies to your particular life and situation. All right, let's get into your reading. All right, Aries, let's see what's going on for your energies for August 2022. Remember to use the energies. Don't let them use you. Let's see what's happening, Aries. Aries and Ariel is standing by. Oh, we have the Hierophant and the Six of Discs, Six of Pentacles. And we have the Page of Wands, the Three of Cups. Oops took two here and the star okay gorgeous absolutely gorgeous okay so what i think is going on here uh aries is that you know you have powerful energy activating uh your second house of money in august you have uranus your ruling sign mars and then also the north node in your sign forming this great conjunction as of august 1st and what I feel is going on here, we have the Taurus energy here with the Hierophant. And we have this Six of Coins, uh, which can refer, of course, to your work. This is your house, your Virgo, your sixth house of work and well-being. So, and we, then we have your energy here with this Page of Wands. I'll get to these two in a second. But what this is saying to me for the month of August, Aries, is you are going to be looking at your finances with the Hierophant here. You're going to be looking at the balance of your financial uh, outlays, the incoming, the outgoing. You're also going to be looking at your expenditure of energy, particularly in terms of work, but also your well-being. Like, are you investing your energy into things you're truly committed, committed by, into, for? <laughs> okay, like, are your commitments real and true? Or have they gotten out of whack and out of balance in some way, especially with work and your commitment to your personal well-being, which includes your health. So we have you embarking on some sort of new plan here with the with your energy, the Page of Wands. I like this card. It's very interesting. It's like a phoenix rising from the ashes here. Um, so there is energy of transformation and change, which you know is indicative of this North Node transit. That's happening, as I said, in your second house, conjunct uh, Uranus. Um, so there is going to be a rebalancing, a rethinking of your commitments, your level of commitments with especially finances, whatever you're investing your time into. And you could be taking off in a very surprising new direction as well with this page of wands here. Um, so... And pages for me are about baby steps. So you may indeed be leaving some sort of imbalanced situation behind to find something that uh, is more worth your while and worth your time. Um, and also that may, re may require a different or greater commitment from you. Okay, so I feel like the way this page of wands has his back turned toward this energy it is possible you may be leaving behind a situation that has been unfair in some way, whether it hasn't paid you enough or it's just been an energy drain, you know, something like that. Um, and you're excited. You're excited by this transformation because look what we have after it, Aries. We have the gorgeous Three of Cups and the Star. Mm, gorgeous. So we have energy here of celebration and joy of I feel like aligning your energies a lot more with pleasure and creativity and connecting with other people in a more positive manner because you are shifting something that, as I said, may have been problematic or just not worth it. So your associations, I think, in the month ahead are going to be becoming a lot more friendly, a lot more inspired, a lot more joyful. Also, what this is saying to me is that if you have just been burdened by lots of commitments here, especially with work, 
it is vital that you use the Leo season energy, which is so favorably aligned with your own energy, to engage in social activities, three of cups. So you may have been burning the candle like Aries often does at, you know, this end, the other end, the middle part, like, you know, your candle is like down to a little nub, Aries. It is time for you to enjoy and take a little break, associate with people just for pleasure and put this work life balance situation into perspective. The star is here to suggest that there is some beautiful healing associated and a wish being granted because this is your 11th house, um, a pleasurable wish. But the pleasure needs to come first. I feel like there's something here that you're going to shift in your energy by simply allowing yourself to feel feel a lot more joy and personal connection in the month ahead. And that's going to help you manifest a wish that may not even be connected with socializing. It could be a wish that is about your career or a wish about your well-being or some other sincere desire that you have that you have been wanting to manifest. It is so amazing how joy can really transform our lives, can shift our energy, especially when we're talking about manifestation and really, uh, you know, help you bring in uh, something that could be totally unrelated. Uh, but because you've shifted the energy, it manifests, right? So I feel like that's something going on here for you. This is the key, I think, of this whole reading, the Six of Pentacles. You know, what is really going to make you happy? not just 60% happy or 40% happy or 50% happy, but what is going to make you fully feel this beautiful Three of Cups energy, this joy. And also, because for me, the star card is a lot about a destiny. It, to me, it's like, you know, the North Star you follow toward, you know, the next thing you're supposed to be doing. Um, there is this, this sense here again, of leaving behind something that is not fully aligned with your next growth opportunity. So, and your next growth opportunity is going to come out of joy, out of creativity, and out of pleasurable personal associations. So keep that in mind. Again, it's the energy field, this shift in the energy that's going to bring about perhaps a eureka idea for you to move in a new direction in your life, to grant that sincere wish to bring in new friendships in your life also, since this is the 11th house of friendships, and this is a very social card. So if you have been wanting to bring more people into your life, this is a great month to do it. The sun is in Leo, your fifth house of pleasure. So this is the time, Aries. Um, our first card was a number five. It was the Hierophant, right? So it is time to commit to your own pleasure and joy and bring more balance back into your life. All right, Taurus, let's see what's going on for you for the month of August. Of course, on August 1st, the North Node Uranus and Mars conjunction is happening at 18 degrees in your sign. So it could be a very interesting month ahead for you. I wrote a little bit about this transit over on my Facebook page. So check that out if you want to get more information on that transit. All right, Taurus, what do we need to know for August for you? Oh, the Ace of Wands, baby. And the Queen of Cups. The Empress, wow. Temperance. And the Princess of Wands, wow. Okay. So we have you, I think, birthing some sort of new emotional reality into your life. Um, you are taking action in the month ahead from extreme passion and joy and creativity. The key here is to keep the balance in your life, though, with the temperance showing up here, because you may be very gung-ho about something. You may be very like, you know, which is fine. Like we like passion. Passion is good to, to bring about manifestation. Uh, but it is also good to, to have the balance, have the steadiness, you know, in terms of making this happen. And also we have two cards of, you know, kind of, um, <clears throat> patience in making this thing develop. I don't want you to burn yourself out this month with something The you're, this is about committing to something for the long haul this month, all right, because of these two energies. 
And it may be coming to fruition in Sagittarius season because the temperance energy is showing up here. Um, it's, you know, which is, you know, about, the, well, what are we in August, August, September, October? Okay. There will be probably some sort of next iteration or turning of this situation in about three months with the Empress here. But its full culmination, I feel, is likely to happen in Sagittarius season. Also, because we have the Page of Wands here, which is Sag energy. So we have a very fiery, passionate start to the month for you with this Ace of Wands. This is gorgeous. This is the yes from the universe. This is, you know, Aces for me are about the self, the individual. So you are fired up and feeling very passionate about some sort of situation in your life that is going to necessitate some sort of emotional change. You could be very emotional this month as well about really making a positive change happen in your life and moving forward with this initiative. Um, because we have two energies here of strong emotion with the Empress and the Queen of Cups. Um, but again, I want to just reemphasize, don't burn yourself out with emotion. And I would also say don't... Um, well, I mean, do what you want. When I say don't, it's it's always just advice you can take or leave. But um, don't let somebody else's emotional attitude also throw cold water on your plans. All right, that is possible here as well. Um, so it could be like you you ride through the ocean of maybe your own doubts. And so that dims your passion a little bit. Or somebody else is trying to throw cold water on your enthusiasm. Um, but it also could be you're so emotionally invested in this particular initiative that, like I said, you burn yourself out. So depending on your situation, just keep all that in mind. Um, we have the gorgeous Empress here, which can be your energy uh, because Venus is usually in this in this card uh, in the regular Rider Waite tarot. So... Um, you will find the right groove, the right way for you to grow this particular new thing in your life. And it really is about the right pace for you since your energy is coming up here. The Empress, of course, takes time to develop whatever she is nurturing, usually a human, right? It takes time to grow something valuable. So the key here is not to rush it. The key here is to believe in the absolute certainty of this thing growing, okay? Um, that you are feeling lush, you are feeling fertile, you are feeling the sense of wild possibilities, as I like to call them, with this new initiative. Um, some of you could be literally pregnant if that's a possibility for you. Um, absolutely. Um, and the baby may in fact come in in fire fire sign season you may you may be getting news of a pregnancy in your world either you or somebody very close to you and the baby is likely to be coming in in uh airy season here with this page of wands um if that's the case again you know keep the balance keep everything everything looks good here if we're talking about a literal pregnancy uh but the key is to uh you know, take care of yourself, but also take care of, you know, whatever it is you need to do, uh, you know, with that temperance card. And also this is very, this is a sign of divine protection with this particular, um, with this particular project or energy or pregnancy, right? With the angel here showing up. So, um, there is the sense with this card, I'm feeling that this is the right timing for this particular initiative. This is also the right timing if this is a new soul that's entering your world. Now, this new soul could also be uh, a furry friend. It doesn't necessarily have to be a pregnancy, but, you know, it could be a furry companion as well. But there is the sense here to me, this is a very spiritual energy of the temperance, you know, suggesting spirit, God, soul, energy, and old soul as well. Um, so... The key here is to keep tuning in, keep tuning in to your creativity, to your joy, to pacing yourself and always bringing it back to yourself in terms of, you know, do I feel comfortable here? Am I keeping my feet on the ground? Am I grounding myself in the certainty and the passion and the fervor that I have for this project and not letting anything else throw me off? 
um, because we have the temperance next to it, and this temperance, of course, has one foot in the in the water and one on the ground. Um, this suggests that there is water is a lot about spirituality, that there is a very strong emotional change and spiritual component to this project that will continue to evolve over time, whatever this is for you. Um, but it will benefit you to keeping your feet on the ground about it. I do feel there is something divinely guided about this particular Ace of Wands situation manifesting for you. And we know that as well because of the North Node in your sign right now. So a major door can be opening for you with this Ace of Wands. Um, I think this is really about trusting yourself also emotionally um, and trusting the signs and symbols and that your spirit guides, ancestors, etc., are trying to show you about the way forward. Uh, we do have a very exciting energy here with the Page of Wands. At the end, notice she is walking through the door. So whatever is coming into being, this Ace of Wands, whatever gets started in the month of August for you, whatever you start, because remember, it's about using the energies. It's going to change your life significantly. We have this person walking through the door, but the door has only just opened. She has only just taken the first few steps over the threshold. So that is why patience, the temperance and the empress are here. Patience is still going to be required, you know, for the full development of this. It's just getting started, whatever this new thing is for you. So very exciting energies here, Taurus. Just keep your feet on the ground. You know, keep tuning into spirit and what spirit's kind of nudging you, which direction spirit is nudging you in. And, you know, you're going to you're going to find yourself in a very fertile field of exciting new developments. Yes, indeed. All right, Gemini, let's see what's going on for your month ahead. August 2022. Gemini, what do we need to know for you? energies we have the moon and we have the hanged man we have your energy in the middle king of swords the eight of coins and the emperor wow okay I think there's going to be a major um, message for you at the Aquarius full moon that's coming in. Because even if I read this as the Aquarian energy here, um, you know, that would fit. So and we have the moon as our first energy coming out here. And it is a full moon on this particular card. So uh, we have the full moon in Aquarius toward the middle of August. I don't have the exact date in front of me at the moment at the moment. Um, but something is going to be released, this hangman here. So you may have been waiting on news about some important initiative because we have the Eight of Coins and the Emperor. It could be related to your father it, or some significant male authority figure in your life, like a boss, um, you know, something like that, landlord, what, I mean, whatever. Somebody who has like some sort of authority over you. Um, and we have this Eight of Coins here. So it might be related to your work. So you could have been in some sort of suspended animation waiting for news um, about your work, uh, about getting a job, about getting the offer, about some sort of initiative that you have been maybe working on. Also, if you have your own business behind the scenes, uh, I would say if you're ready, if you're going to launch a project, um, you might want to launch it at that full moon in Aquarius this month, um, especially if you feel the that you know it is ready you've been working on it for quite a while like maybe for the last eight months at least if it's something or eight weeks that you have been really working on it you are ready to launch with the emperor here so it this is not a time to continue to tinker with something if this is applicable to you um maybe tinker with it until until that full moon and then it's time to get it out there you've worked very hard on it it's ready um you're ready you're ready to go this month <laughs> especially at that aquarius full moon so the Aquarius full moon is in your ninth house of the big picture perspective of your life. Uh, this is also a very spiritual house as well. This has a lot to do with academia, publishing, uh, world affairs, international travel, international business, that type of thing. So um, 
But what I'm really feeling is that you may have, the universe may have put you in kind of a protective timeout about something. Um, the time wasn't right for it to be launched or developed until, like I said, the middle of this month. Um, you could have been waiting on news in regards to something to do, like I said, with an authority figure in your life. The news is on its way. So, and this news is likely to require some sort of work on your part. So, in other words, you could have been maybe waiting to hear, is your, you know, landlord going to renew your lease? Um, are you going to have to move? Uh is uh your uh father going to need more care um do you need to, are you going to be assigned more work from your boss uh is the promotion on its way especially with the emperor showing up here so i mean we're talking about the big picture perspective of your life so uh something that could change your life significantly there may be news around that at that middle of the month aquarian full moon you're in the center of this reading, the King of Swords here. So at the end of the day, this is really going to come down to, you know, your own energy, your own decision making. Uh, and am I going to be willing, Gemini, right? You ask yourself this question. Am I going to be really willing to put in this work that this situation may require of me with this, this Aries energy that's showing up here? Now, Aries is also your 11th house of hopes and wishes and dreams. So you could be really stepping up this month based on the news that comes in and working toward and manifesting a very important dream that there's the timing issue here. All right. So something could be absolutely coming to fruition that you have been working very hard on. Um, but there's going to be no sense in trying to make it manifest any faster than when it's supposed to manifest. And it looks like it, like I said, news or the manifestation happens around that full moon in Aquarius. And it could really change your life and the direction that you're headed in with this manifesting for you. Um, so if you have been showing up and doing the work, it seems like there's likely to be good news and a reward for you, especially with some sort of, you know, wish or gain in your life. There could be something that, you, like I said, you've been working very hard on with this eight of coins here that uh, it could bring substantial gains to your life in whatever that means for you. Um, but I do feel if you are dealing with an elderly relative, especially a male, there may be something else that gets revealed at the full moon in Aquarius with this individual that may see a stronger necessity of care for that individual. You may not be able to do it all on your own. And this, this, I mean, this could be a brother, an uncle, a grandfather, a father, it could be your partner if you have a you know a partner. Um, if they're going through something, whatever that might be, they may require more of your time and attention with this eight of coins here and your focus. You may have to really focus on them. Notice in this deck we have a big tree here, so we could look at this as a family tree. You know the deep roots that you have with this individual, and you may need to be the one that that really bolsters and boost this person who may be going through, um, I don't want to be over dramatic, but may, they may be going through a dark night of the soul. They may be going through something that is, is very difficult for them spiritually, very difficult maybe for their health or their mental well-being, emotional well-being. Um, and you're the one who may be the person who's going to attend to them and try to boost their spirits, shore them up, get them support, whatever may need to happen. So that's another possibility. It just depends on your personal situation. Not everybody has that going on, obviously. But um, but I feel like for you know most of you, really wait till that full moon. What you've been working on and sacrificing your energy and time for is going to bear fruit for you, Gemini. So eyes on the prize, keep your focus. And if there is somebody in your world that matters a lot to you, who needs your support, step up and be there for them because they really do need you. All right, Cancer, let's see what's going on for you in the month of August. What energies do you need to be aware of? Let's find out, Cancer. We have the 10 of Discs. 
just the Ten of Pentacles. And we have the Princess of Discs, so Page of Pentacles. The Ten of Cups. The Six of Cups. What the heck is going on here, Cancer? And what is this? The Seven of Wands. Okay. That's an interesting energy to end on, actually. Okay. Um, you're going to be, I mean, you're already a very protective sign. I mean, you, you protect the ones you love, the ones you care about. You protect, you know, you would protect your home, your family, your country to the last breath. I mean, that is cancer. Um, what I am feeling here is that you are going to be very, very protective over your personal happiness in the month ahead. You are reaching or you have the potential to reach um, some very strong personal success in the month ahead. A, a sense of feeling all is right with your world. With these two number 10s that are showing up here, you know, the 10 of coins, the 10 of cups in the middle, and this gorgeous six of cups, which is, is about beautiful spiritual connection with people who mean a lot to you. And the seven of wands, especially like, look at this deck. I mean, this is the warrior. Not the warrior, but the warrior. Okay, so, you know, you you have this, and for, since that is coming last, what I feel is interesting here, is, and looking back at all of this, you are gonna gonna fight to for your happiness. You're gonna fight for your prosperity. You're gonna fight for your joy. You're gonna fight for your well being. You're gonna fight for the people who are close to you. The six of cups. You're going to maybe fight for your right to party. I don't know. That song just came in my head, but, um, you know, you're going to, you're going to be, um, you're going to be very protective over your personal space, your personal time and people who are close to you. Um, there's something here. I feel like I'm getting a little buzz in my ear about you. It's not that you're defensive, but you may feel like it's almost too good to be true. It's like pinch yourself. Like, is this really happening? And th this may continue through Leo season. It may shift when we get into Virgo season. So maybe for the first three weeks, you might be feeling this way. Like you can't quite trust this in some way, which is why you're on guard a little bit. That, you know, you may be afraid this is too good to be true. It's going to be snatched away from you or something like that. So, and that's okay. I mean, hey, that can happen, especially if we've gone through a long period of, you know, not much is happening or going on. And then when good things start rolling in, we were shocked and surprised. <laughs> like, yeah, is this too good to be true? So I would say, you know, just check anything with this. If you're feeling like any sort of defensiveness, um, here's another way to look at this though. If these things are lacking in your life, if you're lacking the full financial support you need. If you're lacking the full potential happiness, which includes happy family, happy relationship, or whatever that means for you, that's the ultimate in personal happiness, the Ten of Cups. If you're feeling like you don't have a BFF, if you don't have people who really get you, then you may be feeling a little prickly. You may be feeling a little like, you know, again, like the sense of defensiveness or, uh, just unbalanced because in the regular rider weight, that's the one where the guy is kind of like, you know, going like this. So you could be feeling a little off kilter. There could be something that kind of triggers you if you're feeling lack in these areas. But that type of emotional trigger is just very good information to have to know then that you've got to go and make some changes. The seven of wands is also about being brave, being courageous, and, you know, again, fighting for what you want. So depending on your personal situation, this is not a time to give up the fight if these things are not to the place where you would like them to be in your life. Um, others of you may be seeing some beautiful news. We have this page of coins, 10 of coins, and 10 of cups in relation to something to do with your home and family life with, with money, right? Because we have the 10 of pentacles and the page of pentacles. So the page could be saying there's some good news coming in about uh, family finances, about your investments. You may be making some financial decisions about long-term investments that could make you very happy. Um, there could also be, I mean, it's very possible here, especially with this Six of Cups, there could be the arrival, per perhaps in Virgo season, 
because of the page here. There could be the arrival of a new person in your life, if you are single and ready to mingle, um, who feels very simpatico and familiar to you. So this is nice energy, the Six of Cups. The energy is going to be really aligned. Um, and this could be this could be somebody serious, because Ten of Pentacles for me is like serious. Somebody really wants the committed relationship and also the Ten of Cups that they want. Again, the one-on-one, -on -one, the family time, you know, all of that type of thing. Um, so this may come in Virgo season for you. And um, this person may be also associated with your work in some way. Now, I'm not saying you're going to meet them at work, although you might. But um, they could, it could be the type of thing you meet them while you're on the way to your work. Or you meet them in the cafeteria at work. Or at the food cart outside the front door of the building. You know, something like that. Very, very possible, especially with the Virgo, the Virgo showing up here with, you know, nutrition and things like that. So you could meet them over food or in a food oriented like type um, type place. You could also meet them at the bank or doing some other sort of financial transaction, financial thing going on. That's very, very possible. Um, so for some of you, you know, that is that is on the card, so to speak. If that is the case, if you are single and you meet somebody, you've got to check this attitude, the seven of wands. You may, in fact, I mean, cancers, we know, I love cancers. I mean, I've had significant relationships in my life with cancer, so I'm not saying anything against cancers and my North Node is in cancer. So, you know, um, but cancer can get prickly. You know, you know that you got that hard shell. You know, you can get prickly and defensive and a little, meh, meh, you know. Um, even though secretly inside, like you're doing cartwheels, like you're so excited about this potential new energy, but on the outside, you may be like this person with your hand on your hip going, yeah, you know, I don't know about you. <laughs> so don't push away an opportunity either. You know, so some of you, especially romantic, if something's going on there. So this looks very, very interesting. You know, again, I've always applied the energies to your life because these are general readings. Um, but I would say that many of you can make significant inroads on your progress in the month ahead with your finances and also perhaps with a new friendship coming in or revitalizing the relationship you currently have as well. Like perhaps taking a little bit of a vacation together. That would be a great thing if you have the resources. It doesn't have to be a big thing. It can be just a long weekend. Even a night away can do wonders to rejuvenate a relationship. So there could be some nice things going on if you already have a relationship. Um, and even this could be some sort of investment in your partnership in some sort of holiday away, looking at it as an investment in the happiness and of the relationship and shoring it up in some way. So that's another possible way to look at this energy. Because somebody, whether you or the other person, could be feeling like, yeah, where you been? So, so this is a really good month for reconnection if you have a partner also. Um, and it's also great for investing in family travel. Okay. Because I mean, you can't take it with you as my mother always used to say. And while one should of course be prudent with their finances, that's my Capricorn rising speaking. Um, you know, it's often the investments we make in experiences with those close to us that are really the most valuable. So you may be doing something like that as well in the month ahead. Oh, happy birthday, Leos. Let's see what's going on for you in the month ahead. Leos, what do you need to know for your birthday month? Let's find out, Leos. Oops. Leos, what is going on? We have a nine of swords. That's not nice, Leo. And we have an ace of swords. All right, we'll take it. We'll take it. That's okay. And we have a five of cups. That's not okay. What is going on here, Leo? And a two of swords. And all right, there's your energy. King of wands. Okay. All right. That's fine. You're going to come out smelling like a rose. It's going to be okay. Um, you're going to make a, a very important decision this month about your life. You're going to second guess yourself. You're going to stick to the decision, but you are privately, I think, going to second guess it. Um, 
there is some sort of emotional situation, mental situation, worry uh, that's been going on for you. It's probably been for a while. This could be the last nine months with the nine of swords that showed up. It could also be the last five months with the five of cups, also the last five years, even even the last two years, one year. I mean, this is something of long standing, I think, that's been happening for some of you. I would say at least a year with this Ace of Swords showing up. Um, all right, let's put you aside for the second. You're going to come out ahead. You're going to be moving forward. So you're good to go on this. But here is the issue. There is a worry that's been occupying your brain quite significantly. Um, it's It's been like daggers, you know, daggers in your brain, because each time you, you kind of thwart or dispel one worry, another pops up in its place. So, and we know the Nine of Swords can be difficulty sleeping. It can just be overwhelming. I call this my nighttime anxiety. It can just be anxiety about how is this situation ever going to shift? whatever that means for you, it is going to shift. You are going to make a decision. And I think with the swords coming up, this is likely to be happening at the full moon in Aquarius, which is in the middle of the month. Um, and we know full moons often bring situations to a head, to a climax. You are going to be taking up the sword in your hand and saying enough is enough. I'm either, you know, cutting this free, cutting this loose. I'm either signing up or, or signing off whatever I'm doing here. That full moon will be in your seventh house of relationships, both business and personal. So, you know, there could be all sorts of things shifting in, you know, those two areas of your life. But it's based on you because yours was the last energy. You're going to have the final say so in this. You're making this decision. You're standing up for yourself. You're putting your foot down and saying enough is freaking enough. Because Leo, this is the card in the heart, the five of cups. You're not meant to be a five of cups energy in the heart. You are the heart. You are about shining and pleasure and feeling good and inspiring other people. Sure, Leos get sad too, but this is not a great place for a Leo to be. I mean, you're not a Scorpio, okay? Scorpio like dwells in this, okay? <laughs> like Scorpio is the champion of the five of cups, right? You're not, you are not meant to like be in this. And Scorpios, don't get mad at me. You know what I'm saying, Scorpios. You know that you can uh, merely milk an emotional situation. Just saying. Okay. So Leos, like this is not a place that you really like to be. I mean, who does really? But it's very hard. It's harder for Leos. Um, and oftentimes Leos have these private kind of breakdown moments. You know, you do not display grief publicly usually. Um, so you can see all around here are these crying eyes. So this type, this sadness has been really just surrounding you. And, you know, she's sitting in an ocean of tears here. It's like it's been it's been engulfing you uh, emotionally and and also, you know, preoccupying your mind. So on an emotional level and a mental level, you know, you haven't been able to escape this. But here's the two of swords after this. Even though you're going to make this decision, there may still be a lot of regrets that you had to make it. So especially if you're dealing with some sort of relationship, whether business or personal, to really make that final, like, this is done, um, it, may be, it may be challenging. And you're going to second guess it after you do it, the two of swords which is, of course, you know, self-defensiveness, not wanting to see certain things. Um, you may go, I'm getting a little buzz in my ear. You may go into hiding. <laughs> that sounds so dramatic, right? But you may go into hiding um, around that full moon after you make this decision. Like you're not going to be on social media. You're not going to answer your phone. You're not going out. Like you're, you may need some time to just recalibrate maybe like two weeks honestly so maybe till the end of the month but by the time we get to the end of the month you are you're coming out of it and you're going to get your fire back you're going to get your mojo back you're going to feel like i'm moving forward i made the best decision for myself i did what i had to do for myself and there's no reason to feel bad or guilty about it if this was way beyond time for this to happen it needed to happen and i got to take care of myself and most of all, you know, I got to feel that inner flame again. I don't want to be surrounded by crying eyes. I want to be surrounded by joy and passion, 
my beautiful uh, lions or cats here, you know, my passionate feline energy. I need to be surrounded by that, the sun, the joy, not, you know, this tub of tears. So, you know, this is, this is significant, but again, it's like, you've got to pick up the sword yourself. Like nobody's going to do it for you. All right. So I do feel this is probably something business or personal with that seventh house being activated by your full moon, the full moon in Aquarius. So, um, choose your joy, Leo. That's really the bottom line. And don't feel guilty, uh, overdoing it. All right, Virgos, let's see what's going on for you for the month of August. What is happening for the Virgos? The Virgos, what is going on, Virgo? We have the Prince of Wands and we have a cat who has returned to say hello. And we have the Tower. Oh, isn't that exciting, Virgo? We have the lovers, ooh, the hermit, your energy, and the nine of wands. Okay. Is this what you want? <laughs> what do you want? The universe is going to force your hand, I think on making an important decision. I think you've been trying to postpone making a decision about something. Um, you've maybe taken a step toward it or you're gonna take a step toward making a decision. Something else is I think gonna come in and deliver some information that uh, changes, changes everything. What you thought and the direction you thought you were going in, the page of wands, the baby steps you've taken to make something happen, the universe is bam, coming in with some sort of new information, new opportunity, new direction, because this is the um, Uranus energy, which is in Taurus, which is your ninth house of the big picture perspective of your life. So a direction you thought you were going in, the universe is saying, eh, eh, eh. We're going to, we're going to bring you some other information or some other opportunity to go in. And then you're like, what do I do? The lovers, which, which path do I take? And you know, with the lovers here, both may be good. And you're like, I don't know. What do I do? So we have your energy, the hermit, and then we have the nine of wands next to it. So what this is saying to me is... <laughs> Nine of Wands can be exhaustion, can be burnout, can be kind of getting your, yourself in a tiz, your undies in a twist. Um, also, it's interesting in this deck with this card. Look at all these, these, I mean, this looks like the different uh, versions of this person. Like this person has, that's how I'm interpreting. This person has left behind all these old versions of themselves. And since your energy is showing up to next to it, and we have a nine here, right? So all of this is your energy. Making this decision from the new version of yourself and not from the old version that would have, you know, worked itself to death to make something happen or worked in a situation that just burned them out or took on more and more and more, but it's not really what they wanted. Okay. So these are things to think about as you are looking at this decision. Um, it is also possible, you know, because I try to read this in a couple different ways since it's a very general energy reading. Um, you thought, Page of Wands, that you were just going to continue on your life as yourself, the hermit, as just this, uh, you know, do working on something alone, whether that's working on life alone, like you're just alone, <laughs> or working on your business alone, or working on something else alone, that you were feeling isolated. You're just like, ah, I'm just going to make the best of it. I'm just going to continue on. The universe could be bringing you in a possible new partner, a new creative collaborator, a new um, romantic partner. And again, this is going to be based on the fact that you're feeling reborn here with this nine of wands. That's how I'm interpreting this, this particular energy in this card. You, you've left behind a lot of personal struggle 
And this new connection, this heartfelt connection with the lovers here um, is based on the new version, Virgo 2.0 here with this, see how you're both here? Also, because we have two, uh, two people here with this hermit and this nine of wands, it could also be that who, uh, who is ever coming in um, is unlike anybody who you've dealt with before. And I mean that in a positive sense. Um, like these could be all the past associations you've had, whether business or personal. And this person is like, is like reborn, right? Is, is somebody totally different. And because this person's naked in this card, it suggests they're going to be very vulnerable with you. They're going to really share of themselves. They're not going to be hiding away or not telling you things or trying to be sneaky or anything like that. Like what you see is what you get. And I think you're going to really like that. I think you guys could be an ideal pairing, whether that's business or personal. Um, but the universe, the universe is bringing some sort of surprise with this particular situation. Um, so I would say Virgo, be open to the fact that what you think may happen this month may get totally upended and go in a different direction or something else gets offered to you. So you may have something already that you think, okay, yeah, that's okay. That's pretty good. Let me move forward on it. But then the universe says, surprise. And then you're forced to choose with this lover's card. So if you're forced to choose, I think really look at this particular energy and choose the one that feels most new and fresh. The energy feels very open. Uh, the energy, they're not hiding anything. You feel like, you know, they're being very authentic and genuine with you, whatever, you know, situation we're talking about here. And, um, also, I would say too, that that will mean that how that will evolve will not be a struggle. Okay. So you're not into, that's the other thing you've learned. You're not into uh, having to do all the work or making, you know, having something be too hard. The ease, that's another way, thing to look at here. What is feeling easy? Like you don't have to make hard work out of whatever this, this thing is, this choice you're making, whether it's a relationship, a business relationship, a personal relationship, it's does it's not meant to be hard. And maybe in the past, everything was just really hard or you were doing all the work in the relationship. So that is changing Virgo. Let's see how these energies play out for you. All right, Libras, let's see the energies that may be in play for you in the month of August. Libras, what do they need to know? Libras, do we have the wheel of fortune <laughs> and the nine of discs, nine of pentacles, the king of cups, Pluto, and the six of gorgeous wands. Oh my goodness. This is so good. Okay. All right. So I, it's interesting that we're getting Virgo energy that's showing up here. Um, and of course this is personal paradise energy for me. Uh, it can, nine of coins can also be associated with, uh, independent financial means, entrepreneurship, things like that. Um, but what I am feeling, this is very interesting because we have a king of cups in the middle. What I, and look at this card with the nest, all right? You see the nest here and king of cups. If we look at it as cancer energy, that's just in the Zodiac wheel. That's the fourth house of home family roots. Um, if we look at the Scorpio energy, that's your second house of money. And if we look at the Pisces energy, that is your sixth house of work and well-being. So what I am feeling here, and of course the cancer energy in general is your 10th house of career as well. And we have the 10 over here. So this is going to be different depending on your personal situation. All right. So I'm going to read this a couple of different ways. The first thing I am feeling is that there could be an amazing career success for you. Let's just look at it from the 10th house perspective because we have the 10 here and we have the nine next to it. This is likely to come in Virgo season though, with the nine of coins showing up here. Now it could come at the end of August. Thank you, Ariel. But it could also, that was like, <laughs> I think a little ding. <laughs> Ariel did that to affirm end of August, but it could also with the nine of coins, which is September energy, it could come in the September Virgo season. Um, 
But what I am feeling here is that there is some very, very important change. We're getting the Scorpio energy here. So a very important change in terms of your finances. You may have a very, very excellent victory, six of wands with your finances. Um, and it could be due to you uh, and your own efforts, especially if you have your own business. If you are a solopreneur, if you're you know, an entrepreneur, an artist, I mean, whatever you do, if you do something on your own for you know, financial compensation, you could have be having some sort of major shift or change in the energy that brings in more money. It's very possible here. Um, and it's brought by the universe because we have the wheel here and this is Jupiter and Jupiter is in your seventh house of relationships and it is going backwards. Now it is retrograde. This opportunity to improve your career, cancer, improve your finances, Scorpio, um, and also improve your overall, overall well-being, the sixth house energy, is probably going to be brought by a connection to your past, very possibly in Aries. It's very, very possible. Or somebody who has strong Aries in their chart, okay? Um, or a past association, a past connection. Um, so that's how I'm going to interpret this, this particular, this particular energy. You are going to really be on point with your emotions this month. I think you're going to be feeling very um, emotionally rich, especially because it's next to the nine of coins here. So, um, and with the wheel here, though, so Jupiter is bringing some sort of benefit from your past that emotionally you're going to be feeling really good about. Um, you may also be um, letting something go from your past, uh, particularly a relationship, um, so that you can embark upon something that's going to be much better for you and may involve something to do with your nest, your home life. Right? It's very possible here. Uh, that's how I'm going to interpret, interpret this imagery here. So, um, and because it's next to Pluto. So changing your home in some way. An opportunity, Jupiter, to perhaps buy a home, nine of coins, personal paradise, to maybe move in with somebody, to uh, combine finances, uh, to sell your home if you have one. I mean, whatever the case may be, uh, you, be you may be emotionally making that important decision this month. It's going to turn out favorable for you. I feel anything connected with these areas, but especially with some sort of change with your home, I feel. Um, with this. And again, it could be brought by the past in some way. Maybe you are getting a second chance, Jupiter going retrograde. This could be some sort of second chance in a relationship, second chance with, uh, again, your career, uh, your finances, um, and just feeling better in general, you know, really feeling rejuvenated. Um, but I think the most important card here actually is the death card. I mean, Yes, it's the only, well, it's not the only major arcana, but this is really an important transition and change that's being brought by the universe. Now, you don't have to accept it. You don't have to take it. We always have free will. Um, but if you are feeling emotionally that, yes, this is right for me, this is going to bring me greater personal satisfaction, this is going to make me feel more stable, more grounded, more secure in my emotions and also my finances and in my home life. Um, this is the very, like in this particular deck, this looks like a very joyous energy, this six of wands. I mean, yes, it's a card of victory and success, but in this card, I mean, this is, this person is, you know, a bird in the hand, right? The bird is in the hand. You got this Libra. And look at the beautiful flowers here. I mean, you are rejuvenating your nest. You're refurbishing your nest. Uh, you are feeling a lot more joy. There could be some new connections coming in also with all these other birds here. A lot of messages of success and well-being. You could be putting out just a lot. You could be also radiating a lot of joy yourself because you're feeling so much better because you've, you've committed to this very important personal change. You took the opportunity from the universe when it was presented to you. And you also, you know, took a chance on making yourself happy because a lot of times we know Libra, you often put other people first before yourself. 
So this is really about putting also your own personal happiness to the forefront. So very interesting energies here. All right, Scorpio, let's see what's going on for you in the month of August. What do the Scorpios need to know? Let's find out. We have the Queen of Swords and we have the Ace of Discs. The Wheel, the Nine of Discs, and the Prince of Wands. Okay, wow. Well, this is interesting. Okay, it is very possible around the 10th or 11th of the month, which is right around when we have our full moon in Aquarius. Here's our Queen of Swords showing up here that you may be getting news of something important in terms of your finances or some new opportunity in regards to your career or finances. Now, I also read coins as self-esteem and aces are about the self for me. So you may be making um, some important decision, queen of swords, about a very important personal initiative that is being our opportunity, that's being brought by the universe in which you are going to be able to really showcase your personal talents and capabilities, nine of coins, and make money doing it. And you could be embarking upon, this is the phoenix here. We have a phoenix rising from the ashes. You could be embarking the first steps of, of embarking upon some sort of major new initiative that could be extremely transformative in your life with how you feel about yourself, with your finances, with maybe where you're living and how you're living as well. Because I look at this as personal paradise, the woman who can take care of herself. Um, so there could be, I mean, in terms of, we looked at this at a business reading. I mean, I just read what comes up in these general readings. This is perhaps some sort of decision or contract that um, that is offered to you, Ace of Coins. Uh, again, there could be a surprise twist to it this is the Jupiter energy. Jupiter is retrograde in your sixth house of work and well-being. So this could be something that previously got underway in the past and was delayed for whatever reason, or you could be returning to something that you really enjoyed doing in the past. You could make the decision to invest your energies into you know, a past situation that you were very good at and made a lot of money at or made you just feel really good about yourself and you're going to start moving forward on that and it's going to be extremely transformative for you so that is very possible um it's also the idea too with this ten of um with the wheel in the middle here that your heart needs to be patient to have the sign from the universe that you need i mean this wheel here to me in this deck just like from far away it looks a little like a stopwatch Okay, I mean, yes, it looks like the zodiac wheel, mandala, whatever, but these little things here almost look like a stopwatch to me. So I feel like the wheel is a lot about timing. The universe is timing. And this is the card in the heart. So really trusting that when the opportunity comes, your heart will be aligned for the divine timing and trusting in the timing that you don't have to push something um, you can stop watching the clock, in other words, right? Stop watch. You can stop watching the clock and trust. I know that's sometimes a hard word for Scorpio, but you can trust that, that you know, the universe is bringing this or that you have the capability to make the decision in the right time that's going to be best for yourself because aces are about the self and it's the ace of coins here. So I love this for you. This is a very excellent energy here. It just depends on your personal situation. You could also be making a decision. Again, this is about some sort of timing. I'm feeling also to invest in yourself in some sort of self-improvement routine because of the sixth house, um, really nurturing your physical well-being, um, you know, taking care of taking care of your body. Um, and Page of Wands is a very fast, you know, it's very athletic energy, youthful and athletic. So you could be, um, you know, signing up for a gym membership this month or maybe renewing or going back to a gym that you liked before or some sort of exercise that you liked before. Of course, this is not medical advice. Consult with your doctor. 
um, before you do anything like that. But that also is a possibility. I'm just getting the feeling here of really investing in yourself, like making this decision this month to really do what is right for you. Not that you don't do that at other times. Of course you do. But whatever is being brought by the universe, um, I think you can rest assured it is something that is going to make you feel very good about yourself and very good about investing more of your energy into your own self also. Um, because, you know, we know that especially when you're involved with a project or a person or whatever it might be, like you give it 110% Scorpio and that's fine, <laughs> you know, but it also may be that you're going to kind of, you know, take a little more of your energy and funnel it into, uh, like I said, investing in your yourself a little bit more. Um, so if you have been feeling like a lot of your energy has been siphoned away to other people or, you know, other situations, you're going to be bringing it more, you know, back home to you a little bit more. Um, there could be a very positive change also in terms of where you plant yourself. Ace of coins, nine of coins. You may be making the first forays or the universe may be bringing you the first inklings or the first movements forward to a new place of residence. Now, you may not be moving this month, you could be, but it's more that you're gonna maybe realize and take the first steps forward that the universe is saying, hey, like me, it could, the universe could bring you, for example, like a, a trip, maybe in Libra season, right? Which is only at the end of September, in about a month, right? Six weeks-ish, they, they could bring you a trip and it's the reason the universe is bringing you that opportunity to travel to that place is so that you get a feel for what it would be like to live there. And you may see that, oh, wow, I love it there. That could be my personal paradise. And you then may, may start making movements toward actually moving there at some point in the future. So that's another possibility with these energies. This looks very, very good. Um, but I would say the ultimate message here is stop watching the clock. The manifestation is on its way. And... Um, you know, there's exciting energy of new beginnings, I think, especially um, with your finances. All right, Sagis, let's see what's going on for you in the month of August. Sagittarius, what do they need to know? Let's find out. We have Pluto for you, the death card, <laughs> and the Ten of Cups. The Ace of Cups the sun and the ace of discs. Okay. Wow. Wow. Look at this energy. All right. So this really could be the month where everything changes for you. Everything changes. Okay. I mean, we have two aces. We have the ace of cups in the heart and the ace of coins showing up. We have the Leo energy, the sun, um, Wow, we have a gorgeous ton of cups here. The Leo energy showing up, of course. Leo is your ninth house of the big picture perspective of your life. It's things to do with travel. It's things to do with international business, international relations, culture, uh, higher education, writing and publishing, academia, those types of energies. It's also a very spiritual house. The truth is the ninth house. The ninth house is your house natally, right? But of course, your your particular ninth house, if you have Sag rising, is Leo. So, wow. So this to me is not bad energy. What this is what this is saying to me, because this is Scorpio and this is your twelfth house of the subconscious, things that are hidden behind the scenes, um, things that you thought maybe you would never end or shift. It can also be ways in which we, you know, sabotage ourselves. Um, Something that has been, I think, a situation of long standing that have that you have felt would never shift is shifting this month with the death card here. So if things have been difficult, you are on the cusp of new beginnings here with this Ace of Cups and the Ace of Coins. Um, these new beginnings could have something to do with a relationship, uh, whether one's coming in or you're healing one or family relationships, it can also have something to do with what is your ultimate personal happiness, finally getting able to fulfill a personal wish or goal or dream. Because, um, you know, some people are not in relationships or don't want one. So, you know, it doesn't have to be that. But 
10. The 10 is the ultimate, right? So it's your ultimate personal happiness. Um, so this is saying like, be open to change. Like in your heart, you need to be willing. The Ace of Cups is here and you need to be willing to put yourself first. Aces for me are about the self. So with the Ace of Cups in the heart, like your own desires, your own needs. And I think I said this also in the New Moon and Leo reading, which make sure you check that out also. I'll leave a link to it in the description. You know, this needs to be at the forefront of your consciousness. It is time to invest in your own joy, Ace of Coins, um, and into really fulfilling a bigger destiny uh, for the big picture of your life. Like, really going for something that maybe pushes you out of a comfort zone a little bit. And that really is the ultimate impersonal happiness for you with the sun card here. This could have something to do with your creative life, your creativity. This could have something to do with your children. Um, this could be maybe deciding to have children, making a positive healing change with your children. Um, if something's been going on where things have been a little rough lately, it could also be that um, this month, something really uh, positively occurs to bring along desired change with one of your children, that maybe they get married, maybe they find better happiness for themselves, you know, something like that. And that in turn is going to make you very happy. So depending on your personal situation. Um, but let's put this aside because we know this is like the death card is the point of no return. It is a time of total transformation. Um, and allowing your personal happiness to be front and center of your life. All right. So you may have been, uh, you know, caught up with some very heavy things that have been going on. It's very possible here with this death card. Um, but this energy, especially because we have the sun card here is suggesting that there is sunshine after the rain, there is sunshine after difficulty. Um, and you will see that very clearly, especially in Leo season, there could be two pieces of very good news coming in into your life. One could be more related to personal and family because of the ace of cups and the 10 of cups here. And the other one, it's very possible with these two aces, aces are usually harbingers of good news. There could be some good news related to, um, your creativity or, and, or something that, um, is related to your business especially if you're in the academia world, if you are in international business, if you're in the travel industry, um, if you work with children, um, if you're a teacher, uh, if you are a lawyer, um, if you work in some sort of public service, any of those types of areas, there could be some good news uh, related to that. So there could be, it's very possible with the sun here and this ace of coins. And because Leo is your ninth house of the big picture perspective of your life, there could be an offer on the table for you in terms of your career and moving in a different direction or not necessarily, well, a different direction. It could be a whole new career direction you move in. You could be changing careers this month and going in a different direction. That is possible. Or planting the seed to do that with the Ace of Coins here. You could get a job offer. That is very possible here. One that will bring a lot of personal happiness. There is the sense here of also possibly healing some sort of finances as well through a fresh start. Um, so this is beautiful. This is gorgeous energy here. Um, whatever, like I said, whatever heaviness you may have been feeling, I think is, is I would say by the end of Leo season should be on its way out. Now the job offer may not come until Virgo season, since we have the coins showing up here. I think your personal life is going to be more in the frame earlier on in the month. Um, and then maybe after, after the 10th, so maybe after the peak of that, um, you know, full moon in Aquarius, which is in the middle of the month. Um, then matters may turn back toward, um, you know, more practical things like uh, financial fresh starts, uh, manifesting a new job, et cetera. Um, there could also be some very positive financial changes related to your home life in some way as well. So, um, you know, that could be going on for some of you, the investment into um, some things that, that would make the home more pleasant, the sun card make the home more comfortable and pleasant. There could also be a trip with the sun card here and the ace of cups and the 10 of cups. So there could be a trip to visit family. 
There could be a lot of um, uh, family interactions, but especially, and this doesn't have to be a big travel. I mean, this could be just, you know, a long weekend away or something like that. Um, and I would say if you have the opportunity to do that, to do it, um, because this this will still be coming in. This will be, you know, this will be there. So if you have time to do that, uh, investing in some quality family time would be well advised. You're going to, everybody's going to get a lot of joy out of that if you can do that. And I also feel with the Ace of Cups here in the middle, I feel like they really want to see you. You're kind of going to be the life of the party, Sag. So excellent energies for the month ahead. Accept these beautiful changes. Accept A-C-C-E-P-T. Accept these beautiful changes that are on their way to you. Capricorn, let's see what we have going on for you for the month of August. What do my cappies need to know? Let's find out. We have the Ace of Swords and we have the Moon, the Nine of Cups, ooh la la, the King of Swords, and the Two of Swords. Well, we cannot end on the Two of Swords. That's, we're just hanging there. So we got to pull one more. The Eight of Cups. Well, I can't end on an Eight of Cups either, right? The star. Oh, right. Capricorn. All right. The other signs better not accuse me of playing favorites. I am not. I just cannot end on certain suspenseful moments when I'm doing a reading. Okay. News is coming on in. That is what we have here. We have the news. This is interesting what's going on over here, which I will discuss. All right. Um, we got that Aquarian full moon coming into front and center for you with these energies. Here's the Aquarius energy with the King of Swords. We have the full moon showing up. We have more swords here. Um, now, of course, Aquarius is your second house of show me the money. We have Aquarius energy showing up over here also. This is interesting. This Two of Swords, Eight of Cups. We will come back to that. The news is coming in at that Aquarius full moon. And it's news you're going to like, I feel, with the Nine of Cups. This could be the beautiful wish being fulfilled in something to do with your finances. Okay, now, second house is also our self-esteem and our values. So there could be just something very affirming, very wonderful that shows you you're heading in the right direction. There may be something here where you have to keep the faith with the timing. So there could be some news that comes in that's what you've been waiting and wishing for. Uh, but then there might be like a delay in more intel coming in. And you may have to wait another like two weeks or so. Maybe even after Labor Day. I'm just saying Labor Day in the United States, which is September 5th. And you're starting to doubt and you're wondering if you're ever going to be on the road of transformation. So for some of you, it's it. the news could come in. Let me just be clear on this. The news could come in at that full moon. There may be an answer you say yes to and you leave behind your doubts about your future. Others of you, the news comes in, you say yes, but then there's an information blackout or a delay in something and you have to be patient and keep the faith before all the I's and T's, the I's get dotted and the T's get crossed. So it's just going to depend. But so some of you may have a little bit of like, you know, did I, did I screw this up? Like, is this really real? I, it looked real. Uh, it was presented to me. I said, yes, I signed up for it. I signed on for it. Uh, and then you may have second thoughts because, hey, you're ruled by Saturn and you know, that's just the Capricorn thing. Um, you are going to be going on this road of transformation. A whole new path is opening up for you. This is not a time to give in to doubt and insecurities at wondering if somehow something went wrong somewhere. All right. This looks like it's a go. This is your own shenanigans that you got to just deal with with yourself. Because like I said, you're ruled by Saturn. We're ending with your Aquarian energy of the second house. We're ending with what I like to say is a North Node, North Star of destiny. The path you're supposed to be on. There is going to be a change, I think, in your path in some way that will bring you more financial stability, 
financial healing, more money, and also um, a lot of transformation for the good. It's going to take you to this next level in whatever it is you're doing. So um, now this could also be news that really pumps you up and enhances your self-esteem. That just makes you feel really good about yourself as well. I mean, it may not necessarily have anything to do with finances. I mean, it, the wish fulfilled could be like, you know, finally uh, being with the air sign you want to be with, a Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius. I mean, that's possible. Um, you know, it could be that you finally make a decision about something that's kind of been hanging over your head and it turns out the way you want and you feel really proud of yourself and you feel like you've, you've healed a significant situation in your life. So it just depends. But I am feeling it's more money related and possibly career related with this energy going on. Um, but yeah, wow, this seems like it's going down. It's really the stuff of wish fulfillment here. Um, the other buzz I'm getting in my ear is not to worry because I am feeling this two of swords is more worry on your part, not to worry that you're being greedy. All right. Especially financially, like there's something here where this, you can ask for more and because you do deserve it with the star card here. So whatever this is to like, this can be, you know, somebody really seeking you out, especially air sign. It could be somebody really seeking you out and wanting you ace of swords to be on their team, to sign up, to et cetera, to make the decision to come on board because they see you as this star, the star of the show, the rising star, the one they want that's going to make them a lot of money. So don't worry about asking for more money either because whatever you're signing up for, especially if it's work-related, you're going to be making them a lot of money. So you deserve a cut of the pie also. <laughs> so that's what I'm feeling with this. This could also be, you know, I mean... Whatever this is, there, there could be some interesting um, financing going on because nine of cups is appetite. So it's like whatever your appetite is for. And we know a lot of Capricorns have an appetite for their ten of pentacles. And we're talking about your second house of money here. Um, so that's why I'm saying don't be, don't be worried to a swords about that appetite. If you ask for more and then you're thinking, oh, then I blew it. They don't want me. Eight of cups. I'm going to have to move along. No, they want you. <laughs> the star is here. Um, so very, very interesting development. If something's been in the dark, we know the moon can be something that, that's been kind of hidden, delayed. Um, you know, in the dark, we don't, we're in the dark about it. The information absolutely is coming. Ace of Swords. It's going to be positive. Nine of Cups. And it's going to probably have you moving forward in Libra season. I mean, fairly quickly um, with whatever gets presented here. So, um, the important thing is not with this two of swords here, not to let your own, uh, mind effery mess with you. You know how you can be sometimes. All right. So this is very positive. Don't sabotage it for yourself. All right, Aquarius, let's see what's going on for you in the month of August. An important month because, of course, your full moon is this month on August 11th. All right, let's see what we got going on for you, Aquarius. We have the Seven of Swords and the Fool. The Ace of Swords. The Four of Discs and the Three of Wands. Okay. So it is likely that you are leaving behind some sort of situation that hasn't been exactly honest, shall we say. Um, now, I'm not saying you've been dishonest. It could, and I'm not saying necessarily another person has been dishonest. What I am feeling is that there has been an energy, perhaps in your home, because we have the four of coins here, which is Taurus energy, and that is your fourth house of home family roots, what nourishes you and what feeds you. And we have the triple conjunction of Mars, Uranus, and the North Node in your fourth house on August 1st. Um, I think that any situation concerning 
how you're living, who you're living with, etc., family, roots, there has been something that maybe you haven't been saying or they haven't been saying or you haven't been admitting to yourself that it's not right, it's it's not working anymore. Uh, now, I don't necessarily mean a relationship. It just could be a condition in the home, but it could also be a relationship, you know, could be roommates or who, who you've been living with. Um, I think it's time for you to admit to yourself um, and also maybe to somebody close to you that you need a fresh start. You need to put your cards on the table, seven of swords, or somebody else needs to put their cards on the table and move along. So there could be, there could be a decision to uh, change something significant in the home. What that change looks like exactly may not be entirely clear yet with the three of wands here, but it absolutely is, is you, you will be moving in the right direction with it. Um, but how that's all going to play out is not entirely clear yet on your horizon. Okay. How it will play out. I think the fact of the matter is the most important point here is that this has to be dealt with. It's like, you know, you could be showing two faces to somebody. We see the foxes here. They could be showing two faces to you or a hundred faces or however many faces they have. Um, and your innocence, the fool, or somebody else's innocence could have been taken advantage of. So there is just a situation here that is not authentic, is not honest, is not aligned. And again, I'm not blaming you or saying it's your fault or anything like that. It, it just depends on your individual situation. If you haven't been telling the truth, somebody else hasn't been telling the truth, et cetera. But somebody could have been taken advantage of. You could have been doing taken advantage of or somebody could have done it to you. And there is a sense of getting your innocence back by setting yourself free and believing that you can have some sort of stable future without this inauthentic energy in your midst. But again, what that will look like is not entirely clear yet. Okay, so for an example, you decide that... Uh, you need to, to change where you're living uh, because there is somebody who uh, is inconsistent with you. Seven of Swords. They say one thing, they do another, they treat you like a fool and you're done with it, but you don't know what the new living situation may look like yet. The Three of Wands. You'll manifest it. You absolutely will. But at the moment when you make that decision, you're not maybe sure what it will be. But you will find something more stable, more secure with this four of coins. And also coins for me are about self-esteem. So you will feel much better about yourself by letting go of this particular situation. And this is likely to come to a head at that full moon. So uh, on August 11th. Um, the, I also feel like this is something too, because this is such a forward thinking and forward visioning card, three of wands. Um, if this is really about also setting yourself free from your past in some way. So even if this situation is not in play right now, uh, maybe it already happened. It could have happened a year ago, could happen a month ago. Um, I do feel like there's something here about you at that full, at your personal full moon, really making the decision to put that energy in your past. What's done is done. The important thing is that you feel stable and grounded now that you're gaining your, you know, you know, your security back. You're feeling better about the situation and you're looking forward to things with more hope and vision than what you've had before. So for some of you, that may be going on also. Um, this is really about also like really tuning in with yourself about what authentic new beginning you need to make for yourself. What decision has kind of been hanging over you? And maybe you've been telling yourself a fib about it, not necessarily who you're living with, but just in general, because this is in your first house of the self. So your full moon could be really showing you where you absolutely need a new beginning and you've been kidding yourself that you don't, seven of swords. And the new beginning is likely to be happening probably around Capricorn season, about four months, so by the end of the year. And it's time to get back to the vision drawing board here, three of wands, in terms of what that new beginning will look like for you. You know, most things, they start with the decision, right? You have to make up your mind. You have to decide. 
you have to look at things clearly and squarely in the eye and and say yeah you know what i have been doing a seven of swords to myself i do need this new beginning let me be radically honest with myself once you do that then you can really start planning making solid plans and feeling better about yourself simply because you made the decision and then you start doing the revisioning you know of whatever it is that you want to change in your life you revision what you want for yourself and you start taking action so i think all of this is very very positive the most important thing for me here is this idea of you facing squarely looking squarely at whatever this energy is for you it will change but you ha you can't just ignore what this what this is and what has been going on you've got to pick up the sword and draw that line in the sand and you know either cut something loose make and or make a decision and just move on with things because there is something you need to move on from <laughs> whether it's something of your own making or a situation that's been going on whatever it is all right and that will happen for you but this full moon is bringing it to a head all right pisces let's see what we need to know about your august the energies for you pisces let's see pisces we have some pluto and we have the two of cups the nine of cups the tower and the seven of cups wow wow very interesting energies here okay well a very important wish could be fulfilled for you in the month ahead i mean you got the wish fulfillment card in your heart we have a two of cups so some sort of soulmate relationship uh karmic connection that's coming in um there i mean with the tower here And that, of course, is associated with Uranus. And Uranus is in your third house of communications, your daily life, uh, writing, communicating, speaking, teaching, networking, sales, all of that. I really don't feel it's so much third house related. I feel it's more the surprising arrival of a wish fulfilled that could change your life it's very possible with these energies it's going to come out of nowhere it's going to be very surprising the seven of cups here uh is cancer energy that is your fifth house of love romance and creativity and children and we have some romantic energy going on here with the two of cups so and the scorpio is the big picture perspective of your life so the direction you're heading in with an important association in your life a positive change with that association absolutely can happen um you could have an important manifestation occur with a creative project i mean that is possible since the fifth house is showing up over here and the third house is being activated especially if i think if you're a writer or communicator there could be the sudden realization of a wish fulfilled uranus also rules uh technology tv radio uh that type of thing so there could be an opportunity if you work in television if you work in electronic media publishing on the internet, you know, having a blog, website, you know, things like that. There could be some sort of beautiful uh, manifestation uh, that happens. There could be somebody reaching out to you to do some sort of interview about your personal passion projects. That, your creative life, that interview could really change your profile. It could be a wish fulfilled in terms of, um, getting you more recognition, getting you more sales, getting you more contacts in the industry, you know, things of that nature, all very, very possible. From a romantic perspective, which I feel like this is probably more that, to me, there is a significant surprising change in, in your relationship. Now this can be, and again, Nine of Cups is here, so it can be the surprising wish fulfilled of a proposal. Like, hey, babe, let's get married. I mean, it could be, hey, babe, let's move in together. Whatever it might be. Um, 
there's this the little like you like romance pisces right you love a little romance there is a little here like i feel like there's like a, a stardusty romance surprising somebody could whisk you off on a weekend away there's something here where um if you have had no romance in your life if your romantic life has been dead pluto <laughs> uh there could be a surprising resurrection with this two of cups nine of cups so there could be a very surprising new person coming in and the tower is often in indicative of love at first sight, that electrical, chemical, alchemical connection. You lock eyes across uh, the Taj Mahal and you're like, <laughs> you know. So, I mean, it could be something like that. There is this stuff of dreams here. Wish, you know, we have two wish cards. This is a little more fantasy oriented. But honestly, I mean, this really could be the stuff of a fantasy wish fulfilled with these energies. And it could be life changing romance does happen fantasies and wishes can come true and we don't often hear those stories we always like you know hear the doom and gloom or you know our friends call us with the latest gossip of who broke up or this one did that one wrong or you know whatever it's like let's hear the good stories let's hear the romantic fantasies fulfilled the, the divine connections the love at first sight meetings pisces if you've had one of those recently or you have one this month, please leave it in the comments and let the rest of us know, <laughs> okay? Because we do need to hear those stories and you are a big believer in romance. Um, so whatever connections are coming in are likely to be uh, unexpected because of the Uranus here, um, but also very positive with the Nine of Cups in the middle. So I love this for you. There could be a surprising deal. I mean, that's another interpretation of a two of cups. It could be a very surprising, unexpected deal that comes in, that goes down. Um, the thing I would say, if, if it's something practical, like a job, because um, this, I mean, this could be, um, because we're ending on a seven of cups, if it's something practical, just make sure it has substance behind it. Now, I'm not saying it won't, but sometimes this can be a little, you know, ungrounded, the Seven of Cups. It is the stuff of fantasies rather than like cold, hard cash or cold, hard offer letter in my hand or something like that. Um, this to me, a Seven of Cups is more favorable when we're talking about creative visualization and uh, romance and things like that. But if we're talking about something a little more practical, I, I I'm get a little antsy with that energy. So depending on what you're kind of focused in on in your life, just be alert to, to that, that there really is sincere monetary, financial, legal stuff behind something related to business, just as an example. But this looks very good. This can be, I mean, these two things with the death card and the, the Uranus here, this can be really something totally wonderful and unexpected. We have to remember that these energies are not always negative, right? They get such a bad rap all the time. And it's really how you interpret things and also the energies that are around it. And I would also say it is possible because of the seven of cups and even the nine of cups here, you could have multiple opportunities. And that may be the thing that's surprising that you don't see coming. Uh, there could be two, like there could be two people who come in unexpectedly. There could be two creative offers, two job offers, two, uh, you know, new BFFs that come in. I mean, whatever it is here, there could be, you could have extra because we have the nine of cups, which is appetite and extra, and we want more. And the seven of cups is a lot about more also very, very possible. So interesting energies, Pisces, let's see what manifests for you in the month ahead. So thank you so much for joining me for your August general energies a tarot reading forecast. I love you guys. I hope you have a fantastic month. Leave me a comment. Let me know what's going on for you with these energies. Take care. I'll see you again soon. Stella Wild signing out.